In this video, we're going to be talking about robot movement, uh, how to jog the robot to, into position that you want. Uh, if from the previous video, we talked about teach pendant, and we also talked about the two keys that allow you to speed up and slow down the robot movement. So just because we're going through the movement, we're just going to review on this. So if you hit the plus, it can go up by increments of 1, 5, 10, or depending on if you hold shift, uh, it can go up even faster or go down even slower. So you have between 1% and 100% of the actual speed of the robot. Then you can go down all the way down to fine, and that's moving in increments of one thousandth of a degree. And then very fine will do one ten thousandth of a degree. All right, so when we look talk about robot jogging, uh, the most easiest way you can think about a robot is a three-dimensional graph. So right here we have a two-dimensional graph, so we're taking out the z-axis right now. So you have your zero being in the lower left corner, and then you have how much in your y and how much in your x. So in this case, we have the right hand being positive, the left hand being negative, up is being positive, down is being negative. And then where we have from our zero point is the actual x-y coordinate. So from here, we're going so much in the x so much in the y and that will give us our actual position so this is typically what we learn in math class where zero is always going to be the center and then always up is going to be y and always to the right is positive but that's not how it is in actual real life we can make any direction positive x positive y um, depending on where we set our origins so it doesn't matter if we're orientated in this direction this direction this direction or this direction. So all the directions are correct, it's just a matter of how we orientate our planes compared to our robot. So looking at now in the three dimensions, because we want to move in the Z axis as well, so we have our X here, we have our Y, and then we have our Z up to our point. And how the robot knows where it is in this X, Y, and Z, or three-dimensional space, is all based on a world point where it's, every robot has this world point, which is zero, zero, zero. And where that is in relation to the faceplate or in tool frames, the end of our tool will dictate how much in the X, Y, and Z we are going to go for our robot. So there are a couple different coordinate systems we use with robotics. We have our joint mode, we have our world mode, tool mode, user mode, and then jog frame modes. Now world through jog frame, are, these are known as frames, and we'll talk more about frames later on. Uh, right now we're going to kind of focus on joint and world uh, coordinate systems, just because that's how we're going to move. So if we want to move in joint mode, once again, we're going to have to have the dead man switch in that second position. And then we hold shift with either one of our fingers or most likely our thumb. As we're holding shift, then we click one of these icons and that will rotate our robot in the direction that we pick. So if we go on axis one, right here is the jog frame one, jog frame one. So negative and positive that will rotate the base. So this is axis one or joint one, axis two, or joint two. So these are these two icons. This will allow it to rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. Axis three, clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on the negative or positive button we press, and that is joint three. Joint four is the rotation of the arm here, clockwise or counterclockwise. Joint five, and then finally joint six. So every robot that we have has six different axes. Doesn't mean that it is limited to these six axes. We can actually add a seventh or eighth uh, axis to this. Now, different than the jog mode, the jog mode is again going to be rotation of each of these different pivot points. World mode is going to be where is our faceplate in relation to something known as the world origin. And every robot has a world origin, and you have to look at the specific model to know where that origin starts from. And that origin is based off of where it is in relation to that faceplate. So in this case, our robot is forward. So that means Z is positive, Y is to the left, and then 
x is forward. But what happens when you have your robot upside down? So then again, that goes back to that Cartesian coordinate system to know which direction and how to orientate to that direction. So the world mode is based off of that 0, 0, 0 and where it is in relation to the faceplate of the actual robot. Now a lot of robots will have gripper arms, suction arms, pointers, or whatever. Those are called tooling. So we're not looking at the tooling right now. We're just looking at the faceplate of the actual robot itself. So where that is in relation to that world frame or that zero, zero, zero. So we go out in our X, we go out in our Y, and then our Z. Okay, so in world mode, we can move in X direction, Y direction, and Z directions um, all at once. So the robot will actually do the calculation to keep continually moving on that path in the Y or the path in the X or the path in the Z. So in world mode, we can travel in the forward, back, up and down, which is X, Y, and Z, but we also can rotate around that faceplate. So there's three different rotations, which is are the final three keys here. So there's the yaw rotation around the X, we have the pitch rotation, and then we have the roll rotation. So we'll talk a little bit more about tool frames later on, but again, just like the world mode, it's going to be based off of where the tool end is going to be in relation to the world mode, and we'll set these up a little later. So here in RoboGuide, uh, right now I have my robot at 000. How do I know that? I can go to the position, and then right now all our joints are at 0 degrees, 0 degrees, 0 degrees, 0 degrees, 0 degrees, 0 degrees. So when you talk about joints, it is an angle degree. So in world mode, it's based off of either inches or millimeters away from our 000. So right now we are in joint mode. We can switch between joint mode by switching between the coordinate system. We'll talk a little bit about this in a few minutes. So right now, let's jog the robot based on joint mode. So if this was an actual teach pendant, we would have to hold that second position of the dead man switch on the back of our teach pendant, hold shift, and then click one of these keys. So again, joint one, you can see we can jog around joint one. So that's your negative, this is your positive. So clicking it and unclicking it will stop it. So click it will rotate. Click it will rotate. So just kind of get familiar with the rotation of that robot. Rotation of each of the directions. which direction rotates what. So this right now, if I zoom into that faceplate, you can see it's rotating the faceplate right now. So you can't really tell because our we have a pointer on the end right now. So if I zoom out and zoom back, another way we can manipulate based on joint mode is going up to the little icon right up here. Um, and we can click show and hide joint jog. So if we click that, we can also rotate the joint really quickly to get it kind of in the position that we want, and then we can fine tune over here. So we can rotate each of these positions, and it will show you when you go too far. So you can see now it turns red. That means you went too far. That's out of the position of what the robot can actually do. So this is the second way of rotating based on joint mode. So if I turn that off here. I can also, which is only you can do in RoboGuide, is if you go to this little position icon and I'm in joint mode, so I can swap all these. So say I want to go back to that home position, I can change all these to zero and then I can go move to and that moves directly back to zero. So say I want my face place to be directly 90 degrees down. So if I go here, 90 move to, oh, that's up, so then I go negative, which will go down. Now it's directly 90 degrees. So there takes the guess out of there and we don't have to directly move it. We can just put in the numbers right here and it'll move exactly to the position we want to. So that's move to. 
So this is a very nice key. So when you're going to certain positions uh, and you want to be very precise and you know the actual coordinates, this is a really good key to have. Again, this is not on an actual real life controller. This is only software based. The next way we're going to jog is based on world mode. So that is again where this is at, the faceplate's at, in relation to the zero zero of this robot. So I'm going to switch from position joint to world. So there's my world. So you can see right now these are all the numbers based on X, Y, and Z. Y'all pitch and roll away from the actual plate right here. So if I go back to position, go to X, Y, and Z, you'll see that these numbers match. So 1592, negative 180. So we have all these degrees the same. So X, Y, and Z is going to be your world mode. So let's close out of here. And the first way we're going to move is going to be in world mode. So right now we have our position in world. We need to change it from joint mode to world mode. So we're going to go to coordinate. And right now we're in jog frame then. And now we're in world. So now we're going to be jogging in world mode. So now if I hit the Z or Z minus, it will move down and it moves down in Z and it automatically does all the calculations for each of the joints to continuously move on that Z axis. So if I click here and then go up in Z axis, and if I take a front view of this, you'll see that it's moving directly in a up and down motion. So now if I move, say, to the X direction or to the Y direction, so right now it's moving front and back. I can move side to side. Notice again, it's continuously moving on that same path, moving directly out. And you can see all the X, Y, and Zs based on that world mode that we're moving. And then I can come back. So we can move up and down, left and right, based on this. So if I kick up the speed just a little bit, there we go, moving along that X, moving on the Y, and then also Z. And if we go too far, it will give us an error. Okay, so if I bring it back to our center position, we can also rotate around that position as well. So if I rotate on the y'all pitch and roll, notice how it continuously stays on that position. I rotate around, back. If you're really getting in there like with a welder, this is a really useful tool to get around that position. So notice how it's now rotating around that position at the angle that I have set. And it's getting to a point where it can't actually physically do that. So you saw a limit error there. That means it can't physically keep going all the way around. Let's go back to in position. So if I go here, I'm going to just do joint mode really quick again. Zero, 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 and then negative 90. Move to position. That should bring us back to zero there. Okay, another way to move it instead of clicking the actual icons, which is much like an actual teach pendant in RoboGuide, we can easily just click and hold the click, and we can actually drag our arrows here exactly where we want it to be. So we can move it very quickly into position and then do some fine tuning with our keys over here. I can also rotate if I click the outside arrows as well. So rotate around, rotate around, and I can also rotate around the Z. So that is another way to actually rotate and move to position. Okay? So if I go back here and go back to that zero position, and later on, we'll learn how to actually program that so that we don't have to continuously change that. But now if I go, and the third way, if I go into my X, Y, and Z, I can change my X, Y, and Z position. So if I go from here and I go, say, 0 on there, we can see now 0 is right in line with that 0 part. So if I want to go down to the ground, I will have to figure out how far from that 0 down to the ground it is. So if I go negative 200 millimeters here, now it goes down 200 millimeters. So if I go negative uh, 1,000 millimeters, it goes down into, looks like into the ground. So I would have to figure out where that 0 point based on the floor. And once I can do that, I can easily just change these numbers to get to that point. So if I go back to, uh, say, zero, it brings me back to that world mode. So I can easily change and 
put in the exact numbers based on that zero coordinate. So if I want to go in the y direction here of 600, that's 600 off of the center. So notice we have the y of 600 and then my x point of 100. So if I have an area away from there of those numbers, I can easily go into that position and find that marker so if I need to do some work there. So those are the two ways that we can jog with our robot. We'll talk later about what tool frame is and what the other frames are later on. So try out different ways, move the robot into different positions, try out uh, rotating around a single point, jog in joint mode, jog in world mode.